Welcome to Nerd Division. Oh man, that's bad. I can't believe this is happening. Yeah! Welcome back to Staff Inspection. On today's episode, we're back on the C10. And we're going to be handling things like the fuel system and getting the wiring harness started. We're going to install those decoded digital gauges we picked up. We're also going to be installing one of Willwood's Pro Spindle and Big Brake kits for the front. So let's not waste any more time and get right into it. Okay, so for the fuel system here, because we're keeping that Sniper EFI replacement tank, we're only going to have to upgrade the in-tank pump. So I got this Holly 450 LPH unit, and from here I'm going to be running these Dash 8 lines throughout the system. Now instead of running a traditional fuel pressure regulator, I opted to run one of these uh, Holly die-cast filter regulator combos. So this is similar to the Corvette style regulator, except it just flows a hell of a lot more fuel. Uh, this particular unit flows 175 gallons per hour and the internal regulator is set to 59 and a half PSI. So it works for what we need. First things first, we're going to drop the fuel tank, uh, pull the old pump out and uh, see how we can route all of our new AN fittings so we can run that Dash 8 lineup. All right, we just dropped the gas tank. So if you saw in the very first episode where we put the uh, where I put the Holly Sniper EFI system on, this is Holly's Sniper EFI tank. So there's an actual pump in the tank and the sending unit as well. It's a direct replacement for your OG style tank. I mean, like the the shape and everything, where it lands in the truck, like everything's exactly the same. It just has a provision for an intake fuel pump, uh, return line, and then obviously a breather vent. Alright, so got the new 450 pump on there with the uh, new sock and also new electrical connection because the old one didn't match up. Important thing we gotta do here is figure out if we're gonna mount this. So we need to find some way to tack this on out of the way that can sit safely in the frame rail and not get caught up on anything or not in the way of anything that already needs to bolt in. That's gonna be our point. Now we just gotta make some AN lines uh, for both heading up to feed the uh, engine, but more importantly, to get from the tank to this guy. So. Okay, so we've got our, uh, from the tank to the filter slash regulator sending and return lines mocked up. Now, we're gonna run the line, the send line from the actual filter regulator up to here. We threw on the, uh, the header just to see the uh, clearance, see what we'd run into, um, if we have any issues with heat. Definitely check and see if it makes more sense to come through the back, but it just seems like a lot of heat's gonna get generated right there. Um, and it may be a little bit easier to run things up along the frame rail and out of the way because hot gas doesn't equal good things. Got the line coming up to the rail so we can get everything else kind of buttoned up and then keep moving. We got some more help now. Got the dream team back. What up? What's up How you guys up? doing? Yeah. While I'm finishing up the fuel system over here, these guys are getting started on the painless harness. I did a breakdown on this harness earlier uh, when we were first tearing down the truck. It's a pretty sick kit. It comes with pretty much everything you need to, to basically do an entire chassis harness on this truck. So 
cut to that real quick. Okay, so this is the kit that we're gonna be using to rewire the truck. Now this is from Painless Performance. It's an entire chassis harness set up specifically for a 73 to 87 Chevy truck. Now it comes with everything you're gonna need to get the job done short of hand tools. All the wiring is individually labeled so you know what goes where. Uh, it even comes with all the connectors, heat shrink, and loom you're gonna need for the job. Hell, it even comes with electrical tape. Big thing also, they provide you with one of the most detailed instruction manuals I have ever seen on a product. Color pictures in good definition too. It's even got shitty old truck stuff, right? So you're not looking at some brand new vehicle, you're looking at something that looks exactly like what you're working on. And they go through every single thing, start to finish. That's important. Welcome to Nerd Division. Oh man, that's bad. Okay, so now Holly makes clamps for these if you want to mount them to something. They actually make like a whole mounting system for them, but uh, I didn't have the foresight to get that when I was ordering my parts. So what we did was we took a coil bracket for like a old Chevy small block. It's just like aftermarket part you can find it. O'Reilly's AutoZone, and it was like eight bucks. And uh, put some Gorilla Tape over it to tighten it up and give it a little bit of a, a soft edge. And uh, we're gonna mount that to the inside of the frame rail. Anyway, tanks in, lines are in. Now we just gotta do this and this completes the circle of fuel. My man, what do we, okay, walk me through what you've done here because I, I man, I f wiring up all the time and <laughs> he came through in, in a pinch. First of all, new fuse block down there. Mm-hmm. Damn. All the instrument wires are ran. Just have to connect it to the, put a digital analog to digital converter. Dude, these bad boys going. This, this is, this is ridiculous. You're going from old school to modern. Washer, everything's gonna work. Selector, turn signals, everything's ran. Everything. Oh, yeah. Damn, dude, appreciate it. Yeah, bring it to turn, bro. We're back here with the C10. Now, so far, up to this point, engine and trans are in. Got the QA1 coilover and uh, tubular A-arm kit up on the front. We've got the Dakota digital gauge set kind of setting in there. Uh, you can see, we can just pull this out. Everything's nice and wired up. Uh, ECU and trans controller from Speartech that came with the uh, Texas Speed Kit is mounted up there. And so that's where we stand today. Now, we still have a couple things to do before we can get this thing completely wired up to fire up. Now, one of those things, and this is really important, is I need to make a bracket for that electronic throttle pedal because the old placement basically puts it right up against the floor. And you know what? That ain't gonna work because we can't get full range of motion. So I've made up a, a template. Uh, Dan is gonna actually weld me a bracket together. We'll cover that in a bit here, but today, what we're gonna do, oh yeah, I got Wreck-It Ralph with me. He's gonna be helping out. Now, I've been waiting for this kit for a hot minute. Um, I sh it would have been put on earlier, but uh, it just wasn't uh, finished in production. But, finally got my Willwood brake kit. Now, some of y'all commented on the second episode of this build when I made the, made the comment that I couldn't afford brakes at the moment. Well, this is why. I was trying to save up for some stuff that I knew would be good. So. Willwood actually makes an entire drop spindle kit with a uh, you know rotor and hat and everything that works together for the C10. So I wanted to use uh, an, a kit that's I wanted to use a kit that's complete for this. Also, it'll look super sick. 
backed up to those QA1s. We're just gonna try to get this kit on tonight because I wanna get the front end on the truck so we can finish up the wiring so I know where everything's gonna be and then we can get this thing fired up. Let's get that right, Ralph. Hell yeah. A. Let's do it. All right, so here we have it. This is the kit that's gonna be going on the truck. So basically it's gonna come with everything we're gonna need to uh, get this thing moving and grooving. So comes with the drop spindles, Let's see new hats, big old slotted rotors, hubs, got powder coated black, four pot calipers. And then we've got our proportioning valve and master, brackets for the calipers, bolts, hardware, everything we need, even some brake pads. Let's get started. Okay, so in just about an hour and a half, not even, and that was mostly because we had to look around for a uh, certain tool, but got the calipers, ugh, got the spindles, rotors and calipers all on, mounted up, and it looks super clean. And it's so much lighter than these old hunks. This easily 45 plus pounds each. These weigh next to nothing and just looks so tight in there. So it'll look nice when it's all sat down and pretty sure it'll stop now. So next up, you got to turn it in for the night, but uh, just got to mount the master cylinder and the proportioning valve and the flex lines and then figure out what we're going to do with these hard lines because yeah. Anyway, one thing I would like to mention, this was super easy to do, and uh, all of the suspension stuff so far and brake stuff has been like a complete breeze. Getting the engine in, also a breeze. Uh, I think the hardest thing so far with all this is just planning out wiring, which is not my strong suit. Yeah. Anyway, that's all I gotta say about that. See you next time. Got some help today. This is Ralphie. What's up? Thanks for tuning in. Okay. <laughs> anyway, Mr. Professional here. 